Welcome back to Ta-da! 3D Printing. And we are back with the Prusa MK4 kit assembly. We are on to chapter 3. This is the X-axis and X-carriage assembly. And the tools needed for this chapter are going to be Allen keys and a permanent marker, hopefully something dark. This is where we left off from the previous chapter. We've got the frame and we don't need this for right now, so we're going to put that out of the way. Okay, step two for the X-axis assembly parts preparation, we need the idler and the motor, the X end. We need M3 by 25 screws, well one, M3 by 16 screw four, M3 and S nuts, those are the square ones, and then M3 and nuts, and these are gonna be the round ones. Okay, so the two parts that we're looking for, the printed parts, are obviously going to be in the printed part box. We are looking for the bag, X-axis and X-carriage. And these are the two parts that we're looking for. It is starting to mess with me a little bit that the instructions are in orange and my parts are in black. Also, I feel like my black parts don't really show super well on the camera. Should have rethought that. And then I get all of the screws and nuts ready. This is the first time we're using the M3N round nuts. Okay, so we're gonna put four of the M3N nuts, these are the round ones, in the back side of the XN motor. One of the M3NS, the square nuts, into the plastic part, and then we're going to screw the really long screw into the plastic part. You see the pink arrow there, but only screw it in until it's aligned with the side of the part. On the bottom of the part, we are going to put the M316 screw. And then another M3 by 16 screw from the top part of the part. Okay, so the X end motor piece is the one that has more of like a hook shape to it. And when it catches the light, you can see a little bit more. And these are going to be the M3N nuts, the round ones. These don't want to pop in super easily. And so what I do is I use the longest screw and I just put the nut on there at the very end. And I'm able to just wiggle it in. I can get it in the plastic piece that way and then I can back the screw off. And I do that for the other three. It seems like it gives me just a little bit more leverage to be able to wiggle the nut in place and I don't drop it. Next is the square nut that's going to slip right there. I have kind of a hard time with this part. I have to really push to get everything to fit in this one, but I do get it. Then the long screw goes in from the side just until it will be flush with the edge of the part. And that should work. And then next I put the M316 screw in. I actually start with, I believe it's the top of the part. I get these out of order, but one on the top and one on the bottom. Okay, step four, we are going to insert two square nuts. One is going to be from this larger hole towards the right, and then the other one is going to be from the outer edge on this smaller hole in. Okay, this is how my part looks from the top. We're going to be going into this area right there. And trying to slip these in is not super easy. I end up getting the inner one with my tweezers in place, and then I kind of push the last little bit with the pliers and just go back and forth between the pliers and the tweezers. And then here from the top, you don't see any silver showing, so they're in position. Step five, we're gonna move on to the other plastic piece and we're gonna put two of the M3N round nuts in the back side of this idler. That's the one that's got a little bit of a slant on it. And two of the square nuts in the side here. Okay, this is the part and this is the side that we're looking for. I start with the round nuts and because I had such a hard time on the last one, I'm gonna do the same process where I use a screw and I just attach the nut a little bit on there and wiggle it into place. And this works out for me for both parts there. I, I don't think this is exactly how Prusa recommended it, but it works good for me. And then on the side here, we are going to place two of the square nuts. These ones go in pretty easy. I don't have to use any tools to get them in place. Step six, we will insert the last two M3 by 16 screws, one from the top and one from the bottom. And this reminder about making sure that it's M3 by 16, not M3 by 18, makes me glad that I'm not taking anything out of the package. 
until it's the time. I didn't go through and separate all of the screws and then guess the size. I'm just taking them out on each step that it calls for. I'm sure that works for others, but for me, I need all the help I can get. And I go ahead and put this in on the bottom and then also on the top. And these screws take a little while to get completely in place. And now we have two more square nuts that we're going to insert. One is going to be from the outer edge here, and the other one is an inner area. The outer one goes in real easy. I can just slip that in. But the inner one, I guess I misunderstand exactly where it needs to go. I keep thinking, well, I can see a little bit of an opening from this area here. And I try to slip it in through the smaller opening, and that was a mistake. I try the tweezers, I try the pliers, and I even think, well, maybe this didn't print quite right. Maybe this opening, because I see something there and it almost catches, I start to think, okay, well maybe, you know, the bridging wasn't perfect and I need to open it up a little bit more. I continue fighting with this quite a bit until I finally realize, look at the picture again, and I was not trying to get this in from the right direction. I was trying to slip it in through the side of the smaller opening and it needed to be the larger one. This is a freeze frame of how I should have been trying to put this in. Once I figure that out, I get it in no problem. And you don't see any silver shining through, so I have it positioned correctly. Step eight, mounting the bearing parts preparation. As soon as I read bearings, I got a little nervous because I feel like I've seen tons of comments online on whether you grease the bearings or you don't on previous kits. And it just made me nervous that I didn't know that I would do the right thing. But I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler. It's not that hard. It was way easier than I had in my mind. Don't worry about it. For this step, we need two linear bearings, two X end clips, four rubber pads, six M3 by 30 screws, and two M3 by 18 screws. Okay, it looks like I need to make a little bit of room so I get some things out of the way and I just finish off the rest of this baggie that the other two printed parts came in. Doesn't look like I have to have them facing a certain direction. They look interchangeable. And then in the fasteners box, you are looking for a bag that is entitled X axis and carriage. And this one has pictures. I do wish it said the chapter number on each of these bags, but pictures are great. There are bearings in multiple size in this bag, but we're looking for the larger ones that are called LM10UU. These are the ones you want. And then there's also a reclosable bag in here that has the rubber pads in it. And these are the only things that we need out of this bag right now. I do really like laying out exactly what's needed for the step, so I get the four rubber pads out, that's all we need right now, and all of the screws. Step nine, you're going to need the Prusa grease, the applicators, and several paper towels. Each bearing needs to be greased, and you need to use a decent amount, but not too much. We're gonna wipe the preservative oil off the outside, open the grease and we're going to be using the little black attachment. We will slip the grease applicator onto the bearing and then turn it just a little bit to the right until it locks in position. Gently squeeze a little bit of grease into the bearing and then check that it does have enough but isn't oversaturated. The grease kit is in with the fasteners. Lay down some paper towels to protect your surface and also be able to clean off the outside of the bearings. We're looking for the larger of the two applicators. This is the black one and we need to make sure to puncture the grease before we attach it. And then get the bearing and put that on the grease applicator. Turn it slightly to the right. It'll lock into place on the, there's four rows of balls inside the bearings and we need to Get it in position so that we can grease up all of those rows. Then remove it and apply the grease to the other side as well. Check that you are actually applying some grease and I did do a little too much it looks like. 
and then go through the same process with the other bearing and clean off any edges as necessary. Step 12 is inserting the bearings XN motor. We will put one bearing all the way into the XN motor and make sure that the bearings are aligned like in the picture in an X. We are looking for the piece on the right that has the kind of curve or hook on it. And you can see that channel where we'll put it in. This fits easily. And once I remove my hand, you can see the lines along the bottom. You want both rows visible like that so it's an X shape. Step 13 is inserting the bearing pads. These are the two X end clips, two per clip, and we're going to put this in both of the clips. These look the same as each other, but there is a little bit of a lip along the backside of both of them, so they're not reversible. Okay, you can see the spaces where these need to go in on both sides. Black on black is a little tricky to see, but this is what we're looking for. And I put the other three in in the same way. Step 14 is covering the bearing XN motor. Make sure that the protrusion or the little lip is facing out. Slide it into place and secure it with four M3 by 30 screws and put, tighten them in a diagonal. This slides relatively easy into place. The rubber pads, I'm trying to be careful not to, I am trying to be careful of those rubber pads to not pull them out as I'm sliding this part along. Next, I put each of the screws in place and just kind of hand tighten them so that I know that they're in the part before I move on to the other ones. Then I get the screwdriver and I realize that these are really long screws and I'm not as patient as I thought I was. So I find my little power drill that I just kind of use around the house. It's just a battery operated one that I use on like putting together Ikea furniture and things like that. So it's not going to have too much torque and it should not strip out anything. And I promise I was very careful. Step 15 is inserting the bearings in the X end idler. We will slip this into place and make sure that it is in the X shape. And then we'll slip the clip on like we did before and then we'll secure it with screws. This one does have different size screws. The longer ones are gonna go on the left side and the shorter ones are gonna go on the right side, but we still tighten them diagonally. Okay, so I'm going to slip the bearing into place and make sure it's oriented correctly. And then I slip the clip in, in place and make sure that the lip is facing out. I then turn the part to be facing the same way as in the picture so I can make sure which side is going to have the longer and the shorter screws. The longer ones go on the left and you can see I go ahead and do the one on the right diagonally as well. I tighten those in place first and make sure that I do this carefully before moving on to the next long screw and short screw diagonal as well. And this looks good. I check to make sure that the bearings are still in the correct orientation and they're good. Step 16, assembling the x-axis parts preparation. We're going to be looking for the longest rods and also the three smaller bearings. We will then use the permanent marker to mark the bearings. If we turn it in an x orientation, we want to mark along the top so we know how they should be sitting. And then we want to grease up all of these bearings just like we did on the last one, but this one we're going to be using the orange applicator. And this will be the same process before inserting the applicator and turning to the right, and making sure that we get enough in there. That sounds like a lot of steps, but it's the same process as we did on the last round. First, we're going to get the rods that are the longest. I wipe these down, and I'm also glad that I'm using this cutting mat just to kind of protect the surface a little bit. And then these three smaller bearings that were in the same bag as the larger bearings. They all need to be cut out of their wrapper and then wiped down as well. It's important that you do wipe these ones down because the Sharpie's not going to stick otherwise. But you can see I've got it lined up. You can see the lines in the X orientation and then I mark along the top. I'm not sure how easy you can see on the camera, but I can see it. And then I do the same thing with the other two. There is a little stamp that says what they are, and two of these line up perfectly with that, but the other one doesn't. Then we'll grease all of these bearings up from both sides and do it through the same process as the last one. 
I do feel like I do a little too much, so I do clean up the edges a little bit. Not a big deal though. Step 21 is assembling the X axis, inserting the smooth rods. We are starting with the X end idler, which is the more square one. It says to be very careful, don't bend it, twist it, that sort of thing. And then put one bearing on the top and two on the bottom. Don't worry too much about the orientation right now. Be careful with this because you can damage the bearings and make sure that you can see the rods from the inspection holes on the back. And then we can do the same thing with the other side. And again, make sure that we can see silver through the part. Okay, so we're starting with the more square part. We're gonna put that on the right side. It'll be the flat side down and the bearings up. And we'll slip the rods into place. The first one goes really easy, but the second one's a little bit trickier just because you don't have as much space to wiggle it in. I end up turning it on the side so that I have a little bit better leverage. Then I put the single bearing on the top rod and two bearings on the bottom. I feel like the top bearing, I can't see the mark, so I remove it and put the Sharpie line on it again. I'm not sure how easy it is to see on the camera, but I can see the rods through the inspection holes. You can see just a little bit of silver shine through. But now I've moved the bearings quite a bit, so everything is very greasy, so I set it on a paper towel. Now we need to put the left side on, and it's going to go with the hook on the top towards the left. And again, that will be with the flat side on the bottom and the bearing side facing up. And I just kind of get those rods to slip in. I do have to fight with this a little bit. I think partly because my hands are slick from the grease and my I just keep slipping, but I end up getting it. And then I do check that I can see the rods through the inspection holes. Step 23, assembling the X carriage parts preparation. So we're gonna be looking for the X carriage, three of the hex spacers, M3 by 10, two of the M3 by N nuts. Those are the round ones. These are not in order by the picture. The next one is M3 by 10 screws, three of those. Eight of the M3 NS nuts, which are the square ones, eight of those. Seems we usually start with the square nuts. So we're gonna have three on the top, three on the bottom, and two on the side, and that's the one that shows the rod probably going through from that side. In the printed parts box, we are looking for the bag that says X-axis and X-carriage, and there are two parts in that. The main one we're looking for right now is the bigger one. And then in the same X-axis fastener bag that we got the bearings from, there are the spacers. And the rest of the screws and nuts are things that we've already gotten into. And then I start with the three nuts along the top. I have a hard time getting these to fit into the space. So I use the pliers to wedge them into position. And then I use the tweezers to kind of run through the hole. And then I can kind of make sure that they're right where they need to be. Okay, so now I have all three along the top done. I get the next three along the bottom done as well. And the last two. Step 25, attaching the spacers. We're going to insert the two round M3N nuts. And then on the front, we are going to put the two M3 by 10 screws and then tighten the spacers onto the screws from the opposite side of the part. And then do the same thing again with the other two screws and the other two spacers. These two round washers or nuts don't go in very easily for me into this printed part. So I grab a longer screw, screw it on a couple times on that, and it gives me just enough leverage that I can kind of wiggle the nut into the space. And then I do the same thing again with the other nut. And this one gives me a little bit harder time, but then I'm able to just unscrew that long screw back out and move on to the next step. The next step is to put one of the screws in from the front. And this, the front is the side that has the channel that the uh, rod's gonna go in. 
and then flip it over to the back side and you can see the screw has come through a little bit and now I can attach the spacer to that spot. And I end up using the pliers to kind of help hold it in place so it doesn't push back out as I'm screwing the spacer on. And then I use my screwdriver to make sure that it's tightened on. And then go through the same process two more times. So the screw goes in from the front side with the opening for the rod and the spacers go on on the back side. Step 27 is assembling the X carriage clip. So we're gonna get that out as well as four M3 by 10 screws and two more rubber pads. We will put the two rubber pads in the pockets of the clip. We're going to flip the X axis over and set the X carriage on the opposite side. Align the bearings on the lower rod Make sure that both bearings have the mark facing towards you or down. Set the clip in place and secure with four and three by 10 screws, but don't completely screw them down. But as you're tightening them a little bit, do it in a diagonal. Okay, here is the X carriage clip and the rubber pads, two are left. And I'll get out the four screws. And these pockets on the clip go all the way through. And, and the, the rubber pads are also gonna run the opposite way. Now I'm going to flip the x-axis over. It seems like my lines are not showing very well, so I just go back in with the Sharpie and make sure that I can see them very clearly. Then I set the x-carriage in place, and there are some little spaces to put the bearings along the bottom in. The top bearing you're going to leave outside of the x-carriage for now. And then I put the clip on and secure the screws in a diagonal pattern. This clip feels like it could go either way, but make sure that the little emblem is facing up and that puts the notch on the opposite side and that's important later. It should look like this. Step 30 is attaching the X motor parts preparation. So we're gonna get the X motor and a pulley GT216 three of the M3 by 18 screws and one M3 by 10 screw. We'll take the shorter M3 by 10 screw and line it up with the edge of the plastic protrusion. Set the X end motor in place, make sure that the cable is pointing down and secure the screws just slightly. And make sure that the screws are positioned at the inner smaller end of the oval holes. Okay, in the motor kit, I am looking for the X motor. That ends up being this one on the left in the middle. And I get the pulley that was in with the fasteners and all of the screws. We start with the single shorter screw first and slip this in from the right. It's not going to thread in, it's just gonna slip in. Then we need to flip this over, but be careful that nothing falls out as you're doing this. Then we'll set the motor in place on the left side and we'll make sure that the cable is pointing down. Attach the screws just enough to catch into the motor. And it will look like this. You can move the motor back and forth a little bit. You can see that the screws move and you want it pushed to you want the motor pushed towards the other part, so all the way to the right. Step 32, we are going to be mounting the pulley. We will look for the flat part on the motor shaft and rotate it so that it is facing down. Slide the pulley on and go through the same process as before. Put a key along the top so that you can make sure the spacing is correct. Make sure that one of the grub screws is facing directly against the flat part and tighten that one and then turn it slightly and tighten the other one. Okay, so I start by setting the pulley in place and then I'm able to use one of the keys to align it with the top. And I make sure to push the pulley up just a little bit till it hits that key just like before and tighten the scrub screw. I do make sure it's also aligned with the flat part of the shaft, and then turn it and tighten the other one. Step 33 is getting the X belt prepared. We'll get that one out, and then the pin and an idler pulley. This one is the shorter one. We're going to guide the X belt around the idler pulley with the teeth on the inside, and then insert it into the X end idler. Align the hole in the pulley with the left hole in the plastic part and push the pin in there. Then pull lightly on the belt to secure it in place and we will see the pin and the hole slide inside the part and then it'll disappear. All of these parts are found in the fastener bag. So first I get the belt out 
and I already had the pulley and the pin out so that's all that's left of this bag. I take the belt and wrap it around the pulley with the teeth facing in. Then we have to flip the x-axis over again. Then on the left side we're going to slide the pulley into place. I do have to move the x carriage out of my way a little bit and put the pin in and push it in with the hex key and then as soon as I pull on it, it slips in. And you can see that the pin is no longer visible when I pull on it. Step 35 is guiding the X belt or attaching it to the X carriage. We'll continue to leave the bearing free, but on the upper part of the carriage, we're going to put the belt in and push it into place with the Allen key. And then along the bottom, we need to guide it through the belt channel and then through the X end motor around the pulley and back around. Okay, so slip this top part into the X carriage. Instead of going as tight as possible, I do back off one or two teeth. And then slip the lower portion through the channel. I thought this would catch, but it goes through real smooth. Then I try to feed it around the motor and I have a little bit of troubles getting this to not twist. So I end up flipping the axis over again so I can see a little bit better. It still keeps trying to either hit the pulley or go through the wrong side of the motor. So I finally just pull it through a little bit and then swap it after I can get the a little bit better handle on the belt. And now I can feed it back through from the other side. And this still takes a little bit of work, but the tweezers definitely help out a lot. Okay, I finally got it and now I need to flip everything back around so that I can see it like the pictures again. Step 36. We will finish with the X belt and attach it to the other side of the X carriage. It says to make sure it's not too sagging, but we'll adjust the tension later. And then place the upper bearing in the recess of the X carriage and make sure the marking is facing you. Okay, so I attached the other side of the belt. This was a little bit trickier than I thought it was going to be, but by using the pliers, it helped me pull it nice and tight so that I was able to secure it. And this is how it looks on both sides. It does slide along and it looks like there's just a little bit of slack. Then I slip the upper bearing into place and make sure that the marking is facing out. Step 37 is make sure that the X carriage is smooth when you move it from side to side and then tighten the screws in the following order and make sure that everything's still smooth. It looks like everything moves very smooth. It doesn't catch too much. And I tighten the screws but managed to not record it. And now I can flip it back over and make sure that everything is still smooth. And yeah, looks good. Step 38 is to eat another round of gummy bears and check that everything looks like the picture. I think everything looks really good. Time for the next chapter. Thanks for watching.